Welcome to Las Vegas for the PGT PLO Series. It is time for some four-card action, some tournament final table action, all presented by PLO Masterminds. It is event one of this 5K, of this PLO Series, I should say. Buy-ins go up as the week goes on. My name is Remko Rinkema. Donnie Peters alongside me in the booth to call the action as we have tons and tons of four-card action for you in the next 10 days or so. We have a stacked final table with some familiar faces and some less familiar faces. So we'll dive into all the names, the numbers, the stats, and much more as Bryce Jockey leads the way with 6 million chips. And the biggest PLO name at this table is our short stack. Fernando Habegger, better known as Jay Nandes, is our short stack. But of course, the game is PLO. Anything can still happen. The final six guaranteed. $33,000, the first place prize today, 161,700. 19 places got paid, 132 total Since entries in board. this event. Like Thank you all so much for joining us like here on the live stream. Whether you're catching us live or on demand, leave a comment. That's Make sure to let us know yeah, in the chat nice. where you're watching from. It is very much appreciated. It's fun to be live again. It is exciting to have live streaming cool. action from Las Vegas. Bryce Jockey, first to act here as we get cards in the air. Donnie, four cards, double the fun, right? Always double the fun with PLO. Always. Like I mentioned, we have some very familiar faces, including Mr. Lee over here. Uh, Mr. Habegger uh, is going to let this one go from the small blinds. Uh, we also have some new names to get acquainted with, and maybe they're not new names for people who are deep into the PLO streets, as I like to say, but... Uh, Definitely some new faces for me as uh, Troja here comes in with a race to 200k. And Estanislao lets it go from the big line. Sean Troja, 2.5 million in career earnings, 35 years old, from North Olmsted, Ohio. A Cleveland State University grad in finance. Donnie, very, very successful PLO player. I was just going to say, this guy, two <laughs> World Series of Poker bracelet, bracelets, both in Pot Limit Omaha. 2022, he won the 10K PLO for $1.2 million. And this past summer, he won the 1500 PLO for 298 k And then also, Donnie, he has a PGT PLO win under his belt as well. He does. Yeah, Sean Troja, one of those guys, like many of these players who, you know, if it's not... 100% of the of what they play in terms of you know it being PLO it's the large 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 majority you know these guys are very much PLO specialists here's a look at Fernando Habegger double suited here on the buttons good moment to remind you that this whole series is presented by PLO masterminds and the mastermind himself here Donnie the man behind PLO masterminds Makes the very first final take. Yeah, I mean, he, he better show out well. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got to you gotta rep the company. If you're going to put your name on something, you know, you got you to gotta back it up. You can't just walk the walk. You have to talk the talk. He does get a call here. Is Stanislaw? Or is Stanislaw called, but he limped the button, did Habiger and Bryce Yaki, who has quite a big chip lead to start this final table. Checks in the big blind. King 10 4 here. Two hearts. Kings and fours working for is Stanislaw. Yaki's got top pair and some back doors. Hobbiger's got a pair of tens and a flush draw that now turns into also a straight draw here. You guys can see the equities. It's still is Stanislaw here. Three twenty in the middle here on the turn. Habegger, the only one with a flush draw. If you're new to Pot Limit Omaha, don't fall in love with smaller flush draws. Maybe one of the first things that you'll get told. The Stanislaw, by the way, Donnie, only one live tournament cash for 40k. I bet he's an online crusher. <laughs> I mean, that's just usually how it is, right? <laughs> After Stanislaw checked this turn, Yaki went for a bet. Habiger makes the call. 
Uh, by the way, Stanislaus caches multiple. I see three here, by the way, not one. All in pot limit Omaha. So, once again, Donnie, the specialist came yeah. out for this one. Story checks out. Still three ways here. Ooh. Look at that 10 just, just coming in there for Jay Nandez. Little recap here. Passive action before the flop. Nandez limping on the button as Stanislaw calling from the small blind. Yaki checked. Then it got checked around on the flop. On the turn, Yaki, 160. Habegger and Stanislaw called. And here we are on the river as the action checks again to Habegger, who hit his third 10 on the river. Gets the check mark. Let's see if he's going to go for value with trips with an ace kicker. As you can see, time extension chips in play in this tournament. 30 seconds to act for each player on every street. You get a one minute extension with the use of one of those cards. And Jay Nandez here mm -hmm. firing out a bet of 325. Stanislaw looking at that king four for the first <coughs> dunk. That, that, that 10 sort of ruins it and makes it quite hard to play, even harder because Yaki is still to act behind him. Yeah, I mean, uh, there might be some thought here for Stanislaw to put in a raise, you know, and just really put the pressure on Habiger, who might have a hard time calling with just a 10. And look at that. That is what he does. I mean, having that king in your four in your hand, you're blocking some full house combinations, right? So you're blocking fours, ten four. You're obviously blocking kings, king ten, stuff like that. So, I mean, we are immediately far above the rim here with a river check raise. Soccer fans will know that the guy in the German shirt always has to be worried about, <laughs> especially when it comes down to the closing minutes of the game. And in this case, the river, of course, the final stage of this hand, and the Stanislaw pulling the trigger on a big check raise, making it one million to go. Excuse me, a pot size re-raise. A yeah, tough spot here for Habiger. I mean, just not easy to figure this one out. This is only the second hand at this final table, ladies and gentlemen. Instant action. Habegger, speaking of blockers, Donnie, yeah. blocks the 10, but decides to let it go here. Excellent play from a Stanislaw, who chips up to 3.8 million. Habegger was already the shortest stack, now down to just eight big blinds. Bit of uh, tension at this table perhaps, Donnie. It's very quiet. I haven't heard any of the players say a word so far. Yeah, the only one I'm really familiar with, Sean Troja is usually pretty quiet. Bryce Yaki is usually pretty talkative, <laughs> you know, so I don't know if that's just kind of being in the element of this table, you know, but we have had Bryce Yaki at some final tables before, and, and he has been pretty chatty, so. Bryce Yaki, of course, of the worst bad beat in the history Ugh. of poker fame. Crazy. <laughs> if you don't know, just go to YouTube and type in Bryce Yaki bad beat, and you'll, you'll get brought up to speed on that one. at the stable, Alan Lee, who we just saw fold as well. The legend of the game. 
the Lee clan, Don. Probably one of the one of the best poker playing families out there. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like as it pertains to Alan Lee specifically, every time either we have a PLO event or there's a PLO event at the World Series of Poker, like he's there and he's running deep. It's like every <laughs> it's guaranteed. <laughs> I feel I feel as though his family is like waiting for the winner photo outside already. <laughs> because, you know, we have seen many of the of the Lee family members win big and have their family out yeah. to support, which is always a cool thing to see. Meanwhile, half a million in the middle here between Stanislaw and Hoban. Stanislaw made it 200k to go. Hoban called for the big blind. Hoban, the only one we haven't introduced yet from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Also. Quite the resume off to Feldani, a degree in physics and scientific computing from Carnegie Mellon. Oh, so he's a wizard. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> he doesn't need the solver, so he'll do it himself. 400,000. 400k is the bet on the river after the action got checked on flop and turn. Hoban hitting a king high flush. Benji in the chat, by the way, says, my home game, that would have been snapped. Then the complaints would have come if a boat was showed, <laughs> referring to the previous hand between Habegger and Stanislaw. Stanislaw lets this one go, and Hoban gets to take down his first pot at this final table. By the way, if you're just tuning in, my name is Rem Korinkema. Donnie Peters alongside me. We're going to be here for every single final table of this PGDPLO series. If you like Pot Limit Omaha, you better just subscribe to our YouTube channel, turn on the notifications, and make sure to like this video. We'll be live every single day until oh, next you're gonna raise Friday. Me. <laughs> well, maybe you just woke up and chose violence. <laughs> raise everybody. I only raised Fernando. I know, but <laughs> if you raise two, if you raise that one also. Snap. <laughs> Can't have it twice in a row. Maybe he didn't have it last time. <clears throat> it's safe to assume, Donnie, there's a fair bit of history between these players. Bryce Yaki on the button. Ace Queen, Jack Four. Good. Shout out Jack Four. Donnie, you're, you're allowed to speculate a bit more in position, but you know, generally, and I think we're speaking to an audience that you know might be very new to the game of Pot Limit Omaha. Hand selection, uh, very critical in this game. Yeah, definitely very critical. You know. These players, <coughs> I think, are going to probably push the envelope a little bit more than a more recreational or beginner player who might be playing, you know, a bit of a tighter range, which I, I think is fine, you know. That sort of thing translates, I think, across all different poker games, not just PLO, in that, you know, once you get a little bit more experienced, a little bit more well-versed <coughs> in, in the game, the intricacies, the lines, your opponents, all that sort of stuff, you know, you start expanding, right? So... I think it's important to always kind of keep that in mind when you watch these players because they are experts, you know, especially when it comes to, we saw it a lot during the mixed game series. We see it a lot here during the PLO series. You know, these players are experts in this craft. So, you know, keep that in mind. Maybe you don't want to necessarily be in there with the ace, queen, jack, four, <laughs> you know, all the time, right? But as you get better and better, it, it is certainly important to be able to, to open things up and, you can learn a lot from watching these players and how they expand upon their different strategies throughout. Kevin Amaro in the chat says, America's great game. I still think that's Texas Hold'em, but I think... It has to be Texas Hold'em. Pot Limit Omaha, a good, <laughs> a good second, a good second. And I think uh, Pot Limit Omaha definitely booming in the last few years, especially what we've seen at the World Series of Poker with those bigger buy-in events. And of course, our own super high roller bowl Omaha, Pot Limit Omaha. Um, won by the legend, Mr. Sports Cards, Jared Blesnick. Um, it's been really cool to see a new game 
reached the stage where it's, it sort of supports its own series of events, Donnie. We, we couldn't do this with any other poker game, but Omaha has gotten to a point where it has its own full-blown ecosystem. Yeah, I, I think it's something you might see a little bit more of around the greater poker community. King's Casino over in Rosvedov does something called the Big Rap, which is a PLO series. We obviously have the PGT PLO series. This summer, there's a ton of PLO at the World Series of Poker. Also, as it pertains to the PGT, I know Tim Duckworth just worked closely with the ARIA staff to get out the ARIA high roller schedule for the summer. It's 15 events, nine of which are PLO. Wow. So that is largely PLO, right? I think also things like Triton has now School incorporated basically a whole chunk of their schedule the is PLO. So I think it's just growing and growing and growing. And, nice and if the numbers the keep the doing the way that they're doing, uh, you know, sky's the limit for this game. In a way, Joey ones. Ingram was almost early. Yeah, really too early. <laughs> like he was too early, right? <laughs> Here we have a battle between Troja and Lee. It was limped pre-flop. Then on the 7-7-5 seven, seven, flop, check from Troja, 80K from Lee, and a call. Nine here on the turn. Lee still out in front, but it's going to go check-check. Five on the river. Yeah, back to our diamonds come in for Troja here. Lee does have the king of diamonds. Donnie, can you, in, in this type of hand, where it's fairly passive, does the king work a bit more like a blocker, where usually you'd be looking for something like an ace to, to really represent strength in case you're considering bluffing? Yeah, I mean, I think you'd probably want that ace of diamonds blocker a little bit more than the king. Also kind of that texture of that board. I'm not really sure that it's one you'd want to go two nuts with, just having some you know blocker equity. Just rather try and take the show on, hope to win it. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't even finish my sentence, and Lee had already checked behind, <laughs> so it goes to show that it wasn't even a consideration. Jockey double suited, ace jack 10 3. It's going to make it 200k. Action pulls around rather quickly. Habegger in the big blind. Five four three three. Jay Nannis very much using a lot of the time bank chips here as he's on the short stack on hand number six of this final table. Only eight big blinds to start this hand. Interesting, Donnie, how Yaki did not go for the minimum raise, made it 200k. Habegger would have to commit a big chunk of his chips to see a flop here. And there it is. He is going to make the call. Now, half a million in the middle. Habegger only has 425 left behind, looking for a very specific flop to connect with. And there is exactly <laughs> what the doctor <laughs> ordered for Mr. Jay Nandez. Can't get any more specific than that. Flops, just, yeah. a, a seven high straight, Yaki with the flush draw. Now the question is, how is Habegger going to get his money in here? And there it is. Habegger moves all in. Bryce Yaki with the quick call with that flush draw. Habegger's tournament life now on the line. Yaki looking for one of the nine remaining diamonds in the deck. 
to send the PLO Mastermind to the rail. 1.3 million in the middle. The double up here would tie Hobegger with Alan Lee. Not a heat check, we don't want a pot yet. For me. <laughs> A streak of one for one of us. All right, turn is the eight of spades. Adding a few additional oh. outs here to Yaki as he picks up a gutcha straight draw. A nine would now give him a higher straight. Halbecker at risk. River card. Yes, the ten of hearts. Yaki hits a pair, hard. but it's not enough. The man who goes by Jane Andes gets his first. His first of many needed double ups in order to take this event down, but this will be a very welcome right, addition to his stack. It's also a great time to mention PLO Mastermind. We are calling all PLO enthusiasts. It's time to step up your game with PLO Mastermind. Unlock exclusive access to the very tools and strategies used by the pros, such as Jay Nandez. You just saw him double up right there. Invaluable insights from leading four card and five card PLO experts. Create a free account today at plomastermind.com slash poker go. Totally free, no credit card required is what they told us. So plomastermind.com slash poker go. Donnie, look where I am. You're on plomastermind.com slash poker go. Damn right I you're, am. You're getting in there. The next. I was also just talking before we started <laughs> the stream to our president, Mori Escondani, who's going to get in there as well because he was he plays a lot of the mixed games, of course, and he's like, PLO is my worst. Whenever I'm in the mix or playing PLO, I just feel out of my depth, so I'm going to try it out. So Mori's going to be in there as well. Okay, I'm not even I'm not even trolling. I hope it teaches you how to flop a straight. That's oh, what I, I hope it teaches that'd you. That would be great. <laughs> I'm, I'm in. Like, that's how easy it was. It took me like five seconds. There you go. Uh, PLOMastermind.com slash PokerGo. We're going to be talking about this website a lot over the next week or so. So you might as well give it a chance. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see that they have five-card PLO stuff on there. I know that that game has gotten a, a lot more popularity growth uh, in, in recent years. So if that's something that you fancy... Again, plomastermind.com slash poker go. All right, Donnie, you take over from here. I'm training. You got it. I'm training. Habegger and Stanislaw here in a limped pot. Checked to the turn. You guys can see the percentages. In the bottom left of your screen, Stanislaw is out in front. He has two pair, aces and deuces. Habiger has that pair of queens. He also turned back to a flush draw here. After Habiger checked, Istanislaw comes with a bet. 120,000. Habiger's in there. Jack of Diamonds comes home, so. Another backdoor diamond flush draw coming in for a player. We saw it earlier with. Sean Troja, we're going to see it here from Fernando Habiger. Check, check here on the river, and is going to take it with that flush. So doubles up, then he wins. You know, a small one, but it certainly does matter. And Habiger's chipping up. No longer the short stack remaining, up over 1.6 million. Alan Lee is the current short stack, but he's still doing pretty well, sitting on just about 15 big blinds. All right, Donnie, I've played 10 hands. Just wanted to give you oh, an update. You're just in the solver. I'm in the solver. <laughs> I played 10 hands from under the gun. Rem, I, I need to point out, from the time I read the promotion, you literally signed up and are in the solver. Yeah, I am. Like, for I'm, free. I'm in there. <laughs> I played 10 hands. I got seven correct and three wrong. <laughs> and now I will focus again on the commentary. <laughs> so 70% is se not bad. So th I'm, I'm, <laughs> what I'm trying to point out here is that you need to sort of believe about 70% of what I say. No, I, I, I like how fast you were in there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's cool. Hey, man, if you tell me something is free, I'm in there. <coughs> oh, by the way, did you already give a shout-out to uh, Big Shack Attack? I did not, no. $2, two dollar donation. says, hey, PokerGo from Buffalo, New York. Brent Hanks will love hearing that. We have Buffalo in the house. Thank Where you in Buffalo? In. I grew up in Kenmore, Big Shack Attack, so, so let me know. I grew up on Kinsey Ave. 
Kenmore. Sounds like a very nice town. It's not them, it's no. whatever. <laughs> uh, Hobegger limping on the button for 80,000. We've seen him do this before when he had a shorter stack. Continues with the same approach here. Seven, deuce, six, two diamonds. Hobegger with a little bit of a check back on his cards here, making sure he does indeed have that nut flush draw. Shaki is going to come out with a small bet here. And look at this, Stanislaw and Habegger having a lot of each other's diamonds covered here. Stanislaw with the second nut flush draw, also flopping two pair. Interesting situation for him. Donnie. We could see some fireworks here from a Stanislaw. We could. I mean, I think he's already shown that he's certainly willing to get aggressive. And <laughs> here comes a raise. I love it. I mean, I'm all for aggression. You can certainly get creative when it comes to pot limit Omaha. And a Stanislaw is bringing it. Of course, has a very good hand as well. You know, let's not forget that. Equities will change dramatically if Yaki decides to get out of the way here. Might be a little bit concerned about being involved here versus multiple players. And look at this. Two quick folds and a Stanislaw again does it without showdown. Big fan of this guy's playing style, Donnie. It's my first time watching him and He's already bringing the goods. For those that are interested in more PLO action, we have live reporting every single day of these events as well. Check out pgt.com for uh, chip counts, photos, tournament updates, and also active standings of not only the PLO series, but also our overall PGT leaderboard, which is a year-long leaderboard that we are tracking which leads to a million dollar free roll at the end of the year. <sighs> Today, our new event kicked off, a $7,500 PLO bounty event. So far, 62 entries in this event. Re-entries possible as well. Yeah, uh, un unlimited re-entries Unlimited in re-entries <laughs> in the bounty. <laughs> Mr. Daniel Legrano is in the mix. Jesse Lonis, Chino Reem, Josh Arie. It's a good field. Nick Shulman, fresh off the, the plane from Korea, pretty much. <laughs> He's out there. Troja with the ace king, king 10. Yeah, very, very nice hand for him. See, a bean to my right works out for you. What? It's a bean to my right works out for you. We change the table, it's the table. Yeah, yeah it's the table. Oh, I don't know. This is a good table for me, actually. It is? I sat here. It's been good. The last time, I, last time I sat in the seat, I won. Hoban with the defense. And it started like this, too. Lines. I lost a bunch and of pots early, and then I won anyway. Both players so flop a king big. high straight. Troja like has like twice in <laughs> a redraw to a higher straight. <laughs> That's a good card right there. But you know that's a myth, right? It's a myth? <laughs> it's a myth. It's like the, the Robin Hood when the, I don't know how to call it. The arrow. Uh -huh. An arrow cannot uh, like split open another arrow. Ah, you can't hit the same spot twice. No, you can, but the, the arrow, imagine if arrow, you, you throw an arrow and it, it's right in the middle. Not if the other arrow comes right in the same place, it's impossible to split the the other arrow and like open. You really? Understand? Is that what? Is that impossible? I don't know. Yeah, you know that uh, program, Meet Busters. I've, I've, heard, I mean, I've know the idea. I've never. Yeah, they never tried seen it. it. They, they say really? it's. But, I impossible. mean, how do you? But it's like you have to be exactly. All right, the here same we go. Big time fireworks. Yeah, but Hoban with the check raise. Troja obliges, and Hoban is not gonna like what he sees. Troja with the same straight, <clears throat> on a free roll here to send. Or excuse me, to double up here potentially. 
Donnie, it's going to be mighty hard to hit a 10, though. <laughs> it is going to be hard to hit a 10. Does have, I guess, some full house yeah. outs. And backdoor diamonds. Kings. <laughs> backdoor diamonds. Backdoor clubs don't count. Again, have to use two cards in your hand, so if it comes club, club, that king of clubs would, wouldn't you know? play for Troja. So just I would protest, though. <laughs> uh, Ace There's on a diamond, the turn. and it's a diamond. You say <laughs> diamond. Oh, is it? I need some diamonds. <laughs> I didn't realize it was a diamond. <laughs> I oh, now it came close on the turn, and he straight pushed on the turn. We did not realize. We were looking at the other thing. He had the diamonds to go along with the flop straight. <laughs> Big river card coming up right now. 4.39 million in the middle. River card is the jack of diamonds. Oh my god. Enormous double up for Sean Troja. Oh, you got a feel for Hoban here, Donnie. Bang, bang, turn and river. The backdoor diamonds have been the theme of the day. Oh my god. That's the third time we've seen backdoor diamonds. Twice now for Troja, that time gets a big double up. Sean Troja on the turn said, oh, I didn't even realize I had the diamonds. And just bang on the river. I king, I kings up. Let's go. What a hand. I mean, I got counterfeited, but I kings up. Gotta feel bad for Hoban here, who is down to eight big lines. That's the only hand he would use to bluff. Sean Troja. Receiving this double up in complete four. silence, of course. Yeah. Dealing out a blow like that is painful enough. Uh, you don't have to rub it in, but Donnie, many players you could see celebrate here, runner uh, lap around the table hands. after That's hitting runner runner like that. From the oh yeah. Oh. But Sean Troja is a pro's pro there. The delay? How long? How long is the delay? The delay. An hour. An hour. At that time, then. you'll die inside. No, I'm not. If he told me to things up, I already know what you have. Yeah? What the uh, I mean, maybe you have things up as well, no? Maybe it's 3 4. <laughs> maybe He's I got 3 4 5 6, some, you know? You know. Maybe I have I miss flush draw. I have miss flush draw. Maybe I have 3 4 5 6 <laughs> makes sense. You know, maybe I have a miss Even though he started late, right? it'll still start at 1. Maybe I had aces. Yeah. Felt like it was the right best hand. <laughs> <laughs> Value raise, ace king. Maybe, maybe. Troja now second in chips. Behind Bryce oh, Yaki, who is still our chip leader. Yeah, Yaki with a <laughs> nice looking uh, two two Hold'em hands, Donnie. <laughs> yeah. Two King oh. Queen. I mean, maybe yeah. three. I wouldn't mind playing the Queen Nine off from the button. I mean, I'd get in there. <laughs> uh, speaking of getting in there here, Hoban raising all in from the small blind. And Troja, Ace, Jack, Seven, Four, double suited. Hoban only for eight big blinds. I haven't gotten to the PLO Mastermind short stack tournament chapter yet, but this does look appealing for only eight bigs, Donnie. Yeah, probably interesting, you know, probably got to figure Yaki might be a, uh, kind of a little bit wider being on the button here. So Troja is going to have a decision. <laughs> There it is. There is the pot. Okay. Yaki's going to get out of the way here. Was a pretty one. And here we go. Pretty, I had a pretty nice analyst. Back to back all in showdowns here between Hoban and Troja. I'd call this one a yeah. fair fight, Donnie. Push it up. Here I go. I mean, I guess. I'm Yaki folding I'm some of those sure diamonds that Troja could have wanted. Hoban here. A slight favorite with ace king high versus like ace it. jack high. I mean, it's uh, not great. I think we 9 7. Diamonds and clubs. You were fucked on the on the. I know maybe. No, I have the diamonds for diamonds sure. Diamonds for sure. Yeah. But I didn't. Obviously, my clubs are no good. Bryce Jockey not involved, but still feeling bad. <laughs> uh, One point six million in the middle. Tournament life on the line for Hoban as eight, five, three, two spades rolls off the deck. Troja, with twenty outs. Can still break out. I hope you guys are watching this on a big screen TV <laughs> because it is hard to Hopefully display. All the outs and Hoban, hoping he's not dead on the turn. Turn card, the four of clubs. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the sweat. That's the sweat he was looking and for. He's not dead, but he got four outs. A big sweat. Hoban, I mean, not almost King out the King door King. here. Four outs. King four King. Out. Wow, he had a big stack just two Six hands ago. Four outs. Jack, he has oh. jacks four. King or a ten on the river? Oh, oh he's a king is. on the river. Okay. Sit Play back on. down, sir. 
660. That's what you got to do. You got to act like you're out the door, and then. That's why I needed to not be but, dead on the time. But yeah, the <laughs> reverse set. It feels better. Wow. Though. Donnie's standing up. It always We're works. As close to dead without being dead, basically. <laughs> I guess that worked out for me. Lot of action so far. <laughs> Lot of action. I have two cards right, which is. Eight deuce. <laughs> Eight deuce, ace, ace. I was thinking that, but I don't think I'm allowed to yet. <laughs> I don't have the same. Definitely don't have the same stuff. If every final table is going to be like this, Tony, I'll I want to just PLO all day. I think that was the tenth hand. hand. I mean, <laughs> no, it's more. been pretty there's crazy so far to start. So one more it's been fun. So ah, uh, this is the end. You're turning in. You you got a good one to tune into. That's for sure. Still six-handed here. Alan Lee, the short stack. He's the only player at the table <coughs> who hasn't won a hand yet. with the button limp. Troja and Lee, happy to see a flop here for cheap. 10-5-9, Rainbow on the flop. This favors Troja. Flops top, excuse me, top and bottom pair. Folds to Hoban, who also has a pair of tents. Has a straight draw to go along with it. Plenty of outs for him. I've almost come to expect Troja and Hoban to just end up all in again after what we've seen the last two hands. Huh? 800. Oh, there it is. Ask and you shall receive pot check race from Troja. Action on Hoban. Cool. Makes, makes the call. And now we have very little chips behind, but you know, Donnie, in the game of Paul and Omaha, sometimes you don't have to get it in, you just have to get to the next street. Yeah, get to the next street, you know, maybe take a little bit more of a conservative line, try and see a safe card. I mean, generally, though, the equities do run very close in PLO, as, as you guys will see quite often looking at those equities. Troja is just going to put the pressure on here. Wow, and again, for the third straight hand, Troja and Hoban all in, mano a mano. 13 outs for Hoban this time around. He picked up the flush draw on the turn. That was enough for him to go with it. Lots of outs yet again. I'm not even this gonna bother trying to figure out what the outs are. <laughs> Close. Nine. I like your hand if you want to trade. King. King diamonds. Okay. Eight, eight, nine. Oh, nine. Let's seven. Seven. It's so much fun. It's very enjoyable. I want one. Oh, see the king. River card. Yeah. The four yeah. of diamonds. And the Hoban run Definitely continues. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, we're back to square one. Almost I mean, exactly. It's just hand after hand after hand. is just a banger. I <laughs> mean. I mean, right, if somebody you else play a hand, that was too much for stress. Someone. <laughs> right, <it's the> overall <laughs> bad, but. Fred Hoban, all in on three straight hands, losing the no, first no, one, no. winning the next two, I and he's to basically win. back to where he started, which is really funny. Hoban has 29 live tournament results. <coughs> 
for a total of $101,000. So this could be the largest score of his career by quite a bit if he manages to win this one. He finished 30th in the 10K PLO at this most recent World Series of Poker. And he finished in the money in the WSP main event in 2022. Donnie Hoban also played as a wide receiver on the Carnegie Mellon football team. Wow. Okay. I mean, that means that we had, we now have two players on our team, Alex Foxen and <laughs> Fred Hoban. Break now. Just color it up. I just color up. Not a, not a break. Sounds like the players are going to do a quick yeah, color up. Yeah. I don't think that's going to affect our action. Well, it can definitely be a nice way to uh, get a nice little plug in here. Octopi Poker is building your path to poker mastery with a fun, social, and affordable way to learn poker designed by the best poker minds. You see two of them on your screen right there, Andrew Lucky Chewy Lichtenberger and Nick Schulman. Octopi Poker combines modern tools with collaborative poker study. Join the growing Octopi Poker tribe at octopipoker.ai. There you see George, the Octopi Poker mascot. We are playing 50,000, 100,000 on the blinds. Bryce Yaki here, who is still out in front, raises to 350,000. Action over to Estanislao in the big blind. He's got ace, queen, 10, six with two suits, makes the call. Jack, jack, eight, two diamonds. Check, check to the seven of clubs on the turn. There is 850,000 out there in the middle. Stanislaw first, he checks again. Yeah. 300,000 is the bet from Yaki. Stanislaw made the call. Third jack comes in here on the river. Stanislaw is still best. Let's see if Yaki wants to try again to take this one. Here it comes. 600,000 into a pot of 1.45 million.
Look at this. Stanislav does make the call. He's got that ace queen high, along with those three jacks on board. <coughs> Correctly assesses the situation and picks off the bluff from Yaki. And with that pot, Stanislaw is now up on top of the leaderboard, climbing up over five million in chips. <coughs> been very, been very impressed by Stanislaw today. He's been playing extremely well, picking his spots extremely well, making you know pretty much all the the right decisions. So now with the chip lead, I would imagine he's going to be quite the handful to battle with. Early front runner for MVP of the day. Both sides. Definitely a lot to play for still, as we are still six-handed. Quick update on the payouts of this event, which can also be found in the description on win. our I'm to get the YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 33K Usually for six. Yeah. 161,000 for the winner. Yeah, One pip better yeah. call. <laughs> Alan Lee has been slowly ground down into a pulp. Still yeah, hasn't really, won has really nothing for him to kind of get yeah. involved with. I mean, hasn't won a hand yet. Yeah, the, the one pot, I guess, at least the most meaningful pot that he was involved with, the blind versus blind battle against Sean Troja when Troja backed into a flush. But other than that, you know, Lee's just been hanging on for now. He says queen here between Stanislaw and Yaki as these two go head to head once again. Minimum wager on the flop from Stanislaw. Keep in mind that there is a big blind ante for the play in this series. That does not apply to the pot calculation pre-flop, but then post-flop it does come into the equation. So just keep that in mind when players are announcing pot on any raises or re-raises. Check fold there on the turn from Stanislaw, giving Yaki this one. He gets some chips back. Action here folds all the way over to Bryce Yaki in the small blind. He's got four spades in his hand, ace queen 10 5. Jack, nine, seven, two diamonds on this flop, half a million in the middle. Yaki, all spades here.
Yawk is going to come along here on the turn after Hoban bet 300k. Hoban already with a straight going to the river. Hoban gets the check mark here as the Queen of Hearts hits. No flush possible. Hoban should feel pretty confident about his straight. King 10, of course, would beat him, but still. Looks like he's counting out a value bet here. Yeah, looks like a, a juicy one, too. 900 into 1.1. Yaki makes the call. He's going to get shown the bad news. Bit of a uh, tumble down the mountain for Bryce Yaki in the in his <coughs> recent hands. Loses a big one against the Stanislau. Loses a nice chunk there to Hoban. And now it's Hoban up on top, narrowly edging out Stanislav for the chip lead. And I don't know what, <laughs> five, ten hands ago, Hoban was all in in back to back hands against Sean Troja. Hoban also said, Can someone else please play a hand now? <laughs> because this is getting way too stressful. Swingy, swingy, that's for sure. Reading Hoban's bio, Donnie, is extremely intimidating. This man has done it all. Focused on cryptocurrency trading, where he immediately found success. Yeah, so he's rich. He's, he's rich. A which billionaire. Is, yep. Which is very, <laughs> uh, very tough. He used to deal bridge tournaments. Do you know how to play bridge, Donnie? No. I mean, I, I like that it says that he graduated from Carnegie Mellon degree in physics and scientific com computing. As if that doesn't tell you how smart he is in and of itself, he finished on the Dean's List with high honors, received an award in biology for maintaining the highest GPA in the class's history. I mean, what? <laughs> yeah. Could you overachieve any more, sir? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Quite possibly the smartest guy we've had <laughs> at a final table, right? I mean, I, I'm just going to say Paul David Omaha must be boring to him. I know, right? He's got it probably he got it all solved. Uh, Bryce Yaki with one mystery card here that did not get get caught by the reader, uh, but his king king ten with the spades good enough for him to take this one down. I mean, yeah, this this bio sheet is <laughs> something else. Volunteered at a hospital to help organize a large database of health records. His favorite job working as a tennis instructor. Dedicated himself to teaching children the fundamentals about the game. He's knowledgeable about proper grip technique, stance, footwork. I mean, this guy's incredible. It's, I'm a big fan. <laughs> it's incredible. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> um, by the way, Bryce Jockey started as the chip leader, now down to uh, 2.7 million. Has taken a bit of a beating, but if anyone knows how to make a comeback, it will be Bryce Jockey, who, of course, winner of the 2017 10K PLO8 for 511K. Finished fourth in the 2019 50K PPC. Long list of accomplishments by Yaki. Action here on Sean Troja on the in the small blind. All hearts here for Alan Lee. As the board brings out deuce to seven, Lee does flop seven and decides to go for it here. Lee, a big favorite in this all-in showdown, a very much needed double up could be at hand here as Troja has just three outs. As you can tell by the look on his face, this is not a good spot for him. Troja needs an eight, six of diamonds hits on the turn, and all of a sudden, Troja goes from three outs to 17 outs. 
Alan Lee with a quick glance over to the rail. River card is the seven of spades, and that will secure a double up for Alan Lee up to two million. Donnie, I feel like everyone is getting a turn in <laughs> doubling up. They are. Everyone's gotten in there. Everyone's been active. The chips are certainly flying. People are not holding back at this final table. Uh, Donnie Troja, about an orbit ago, had 4.3 million chips. Yeah, he had that huge double up through Hoban, and here he is now, sub 1 million, shortest stack remaining. But like Hoban did, I mean, he could certainly spin it back up the other way. You're not out of it till you're out of it. There's one card on the mark. <laughs> I find it funny, Donnie, when players say that a card is marked. What they're trying to say yeah. is a card is damaged. <laughs> because c marking means oh. it was done with intent. And unless, you know, this is a, a theme at the table, I think it's maybe just a scratch from the shuffle machine or yeah, something or along those it's lines. These RFID cards are a little bit stiffer than, than regular cards. And when you're trying to peel back four of them in this environment, you know, you might uh, apply a little bit more pressure. Maybe your fingernail digs in. Maybe you put a little bit of crease in them, whatever it is. All right, Sean Troja here. He's going to try and start that spin up on the button. He made it 350. <laughs> Alan Lee re-raised the pot. Troja's going to get it in. Here we go. Wow. Queens and Jacks versus Queens and Eight Deuce. Let's see if Eight Deuce can find a way to become relevant in this hand. Hearts, of course, the best thing that Troa can hope for. Another big all-in here with a player at risk. <laughs> Ace, wow. 10, King. Two clubs out there. And Alan Lee flops. A Broadway straight, about as dead as you can be in pot limit Omaha. Turn card six of clubs will end it, and Sean Troja from 4.3 million to out in about five hands is our first casualty at this final table. Troja takes home $33,000 for his sixth place finish, and I'm assuming we're going to see him in event number two as this one is down to the final five, and Jane Nandes is now the short stack, again, sitting on 10 big blinds after an earlier double up. What was the card, three diamonds? I didn't, uh, I didn't remember, but probably if he's saying so. I, I know it wasn't big because my end was trash. Got it. So. Patience paying off nicely <coughs> for Alan but Lee. But I tried to you scratch know. it off, like if it was... Didn't oh, really get too involved dot. early yeah, on, but these last no, five minutes or so, dot. he's like oh, done pretty dot. well for himself, and. Now he's up over three million, and the field is Probably one something, player short. Yeah, but there's no, there's safe. no downside Sorry, to yeah. change it too. Yeah. Someone marked the three of diamonds. So it, it, so oh, I shove on your blind. <laughs> good high low three player. Of diamonds, bang. <laughs> it's, good info. Info. it's good info. Speaking of a spin-up, Donnie, Alan Lee just sat on his hands for about 17 hands. Yeah. And decided to get involved, and now he is a real threat, being third in chips with 3.1 million. These aces here are going to be a welcome sight for Habiger, who is the short stack with five players remaining. He is in the small blind. Comes in with a raise, 300,000. Stanislaw is in there. Queen, nine, three. Top fair for Stanislaw, but it is behind the aces for Habiger. This might be enough for the money to get in here between both players. 
Hobbiger is not entirely deep. There it is, the bet, the raise, <coughs> the call. Here we go. Fernando Hobbiger, a.k.a. Jay Nandez, going to look for another double up at this final table. <coughs> Hobbiger is 63%, and he's doing the stand-up. He's doing the stand-up. He took taking a page out of Hoban's book, who stood up and got the double up. Level three. Six. Nice. Six. Nice. <laughs> Turn card. Is, I like it so far. Three is good. Stanislaw down to just two outs. A queen and a queen only will send Habegger to the rail. So pretty comfortable. River is the six of diamonds. You've got the six. Sit down, sir. Very solid double up there for the man known as Jay Nandez. He is now up over two million in chips. Still healthy over there for Stanislaw. Second in chips behind Fred Hoban. Hobbaker, by the way, is still the shortest stack at the table. 22 big blinds. Donnie, say what you will about PLO cash games, which I know are very popular, but there's just something about watching tournament action that gets me excited. You know, we've got the big all-ins, we've got the run-up, we got, you know, the, the, the heroes falling from grace, being out the door in sixth place. It's just so much fun seeing the chips move back and forth across the table. Um, and if you're joy and enjoying the content, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. I uh, just want to mention as well, since we just saw Habegger all in again, go to plomastermind.com slash pokergo and start practicing your PLO game for free. As you've heard earlier on the broadcast, I'm literally in there right now practicing my pre-flop moves. I've already picked up quite a few little tips from the engine. Uh, 7107 mystery cards for Stanislaw with both Yaki and Lee with a 10. Lee, of course, with the overpair as well. Yeah, Lee had limped in here pre-flop, you know, which then allowed Stanislaw and Yaki to get in there for very cheap. Stanislaw completing from the small blind that Yaki just checked out of the big blind. Don't know Stanislaw's cards, as Remco said, so don't know the equities right now. 125. Yaki comes with 125. Stanislaus out of the way after Lee called. Five on the river. Three. You wanted the six. I wanted to split you both. Yeah. Could be reversed. It would be the same. <laughs> That's and true. Sweat. <laughs> Lee here is best with the aces in his hand. The sevens on the board. Yaki checks. Actually, the ten. Maybe the ten would be... Lee checks check behind. He's going to take this one. one. It's been the Alan Lee show ever since <coughs> he got his first double up. Patience definitely paying off here at this final table. I know Big Shack Sack is probably still watching Donnie. <laughs> but he also said he grew up in Kenmore as well. That's right, baby. Thanks for the $5 donation to the stream. Very much appreciated. Straight into the coffee fund. Speaking of coffee, I could use one. <laughs> we need an assistant. <coughs> you know, we do. Send them along. By the way, if you're catching us on YouTube and if you're in the chat with us, please make sure to let us know where you're watching from. And let, us know, let us know what you're having. Let us know what you're sipping on. I'm going to get a coffee the next chance I get. Always hot, always black. Yeah, I like. Your iced coffee guy. I had a little spat with my wife the other day because, like, listen, it's just easy for us to, like, if I drop off the kids in the morning, sometimes I'm on my, on my way home, you know, just grabbing a quick uh, coffee at Starbucks. It's just easy, right? And I'm always, you know, hey, what would you like? Would I like me to get you something? I swear the order changes every time. I'm like, wait, can't you just have an order? <laughs> Even if your order is complex, can't right. it just be the same? Right, right, right. Every time it changes. I'm like, what? 
I don't even. Why does it always have to change? Is Can it like, just be the same? Is she uh, <laughs> like a, a triple palm vanilla macchiato? No, no it's not even person? like it's not even like it, she'll be like I want an iced coffee with the vanilla cold foam, and then it's like I want the iced coffee with a splash of the vanilla syrup. I want today. I want a cold brew. Today I want a matcha latte frozen. Uh, can it just be the <laughs> same thing? Oh man! Just so I can click the button on the app and right. just click, just set up a search. Can it just be the same? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Why is it? Why is it literally always changed? Also, I don't understand how it works. Like, how do you even know like what's available? What's available? Like, I, like I don't. How are your taste buds working? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> See, I got it all figured out. My fiance always <laughs> wants sort of the same thing, but a variation of it. So it, it's always a sugar-free latte with oat milk, and then the the flavor has has some variety in it. Sometimes we go vanilla. Sometimes we go lavender. Lots of little options. Keeping it simple. Action folds over to Bryce Yockey. He limps on the button. Hoban makes the call from the small blind, and Alan Lee <coughs> checks his option in the big blind. So three ways here, nine, seven, three, two spades. Action checks over to Yockey. He also checks. Nine of clubs here on the turn. Alan Lee's sitting there with a full house after flopping bottom set. Hoban could be in some trouble here. He's got three nines. Yaki's got some draws working, so not not necessarily he's gonna get out of the way. Hoban comes with 275. Lee calls. I was going to say, this is the most dangerous situation for Yaki. Two flush draws, straight draws, and drawing stone dead. Paired board, of course. Kutz care away. The flush draws and the straight draws. But, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yaki comes Almost with the aggression. Waited until the last point second point. until the chips hit the one table point. there. Wow. Where is it? 1.5. 1.5 million is the check is the excuse me is the button race from Bryce Yaki after Lee called 275. This is very interesting to me. Listen, I am not the most expert PLO person in the world. I need to say that before I say what I'm about to say. But if Hoban comes in here, I mean, how do you feel if you're Lee? Right. With the like, there are a lot, you know, a few other full houses that can beat you. It's just a it's gonna be an interesting hand. Hoban has both his opponents covered. This could be a clash for the ages if Hoban decides oh. to get involved here. Oh, here we go. Wow. Look at this. Oh my god, and Lee immediately sits back and has a big decision to make here. The fact that Lee is thinking about this must make Bryce Yockey feel like whatever happens, I'm probably in a lot of trouble. Yeah, you can't can't be feeling good if you're Bryce Yockey now, just knowing that. I mean, your flush draws one are on the lower side. There's a paired board out there, as you already mentioned. But Donnie, realize this for a second. If Lee folds, Yockey has outs again. <laughs> yes. Right? Right now, <laughs> if Lee gets involved, Bryce Yockey is drawing dead. But if if Lee folds his full house, which is in the realm of possibility right now, then Yaki all of a sudden has outs again. This is an incredible development here at this final table. Hoban putting on the pressure, making Lee decide for his tournament life. 
He's got three threes full of nines. <laughs> the look on his face tells the whole story. There's a pretty decent chance, Donnie, that Lee is thinking about exactly what is going on here. One of them will have a nine, and one of them will have a handful of draws. And then what are the chances that I'm drawing dead? Yeah, that's also the, the consideration that he does have fewer chips than Hoban. So if if Lee could put his money in here, or if he did put his money in here, like ultimately he, he could end up out of the tournament if he is beat, right? Now, if he had a stack that was larger than Hoban, maybe it makes his decision a little bit easier in terms of like, okay, if I ultimately lose, I run into it, it's a cooler, whatever, I still have a million left, let's say. But here, it, it could result in him being eliminated, which, you know, makes it a little bit trickier overall. He's seemingly only looking at Yaki. I think he's just kind of thinking like, WTF, man, is this, is this real? Wow. wow, full house in the muck. Let's see him. Sorry. Oh, I think. Oh, I think Hoban almost oh. table tabled his hand there, thinking, Wait. thinking Yaki was all in. I thought Yaki was all in. No, he's not. He's got about seven hundred behind or so. Yeah, seven twenty-five behind. Oh my God! Did that really happen? And now this is interesting because, as you said, if Lee gets out of the way, which he did, okay, Yaki makes the call. <laughs> you, were, you were rooting. Wow, and Lee's got to see it. He's got, he's oh got to see God. it. Oh my God! and spades. Yeah. Yaki goes from zero percent to a coin flip. He's no this is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I'd love to see the look on Alan Lee's face when these hands were tabled. Nineteen outs for Yaki. Huge river card coming, and it is. The jack of clubs, and Bryce Yaki goes from being almost <laughs> out the door yeah, to receiving an enormous double up. Two, two, five. Two, two. This game is insane. Nice hand, bro. Thanks. This game is insane. And had Alan Lee put his money in there, he would have taken out Bryce Yaki and got up to what, 10, 11 million in chips, something like that? The only I mean, card I saw in your hand when you turned it over was a nine. Yeah, no, I know. Obviously, I wasn't doing that on purpose. No, of course. But I was like, all right, well, I guess I hope he has trips. I think it might be on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that next level, I wish. Again, I get the best draw. If it was a seven or a three, I think I would have folded. You're the big fine boy. You get to make the nuts look. Yeah, to use my first oh, what a hand! Wow. King, King, Very disappointed about it. You made me use like three, so it's okay. <laughs> You'll learn about it shortly. I will, I will. Let us know in the chat if you would have been able to fold your full house. Queen threes six. full of nines yeah. there in Alan Lee's position. I expect it, so I don't know what Tony, I don't think I have it in me. Yeah, See, you, you, you can say, I don't think I have it in me to fold. I might say, I don't think I have it in me to I mean, call. Like, it, it, I, I mean, <laughs> like, what? Oh, no, yeah. We, we You're the draw. worst full house. <laughs> and, in, and oh, you know, in PLO, different than hold them. I mean, it's just. After this hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically. Especially with that being a limped pot, too. Like, that factors into the equation, you know? Check. No, the hand really yeah. I was like, I'm not sure he's really going to fold here. Queen and three, not. seven here on the flop. His first, queen oh, excuse me, his last hand before the break. Like it's, it's, it's like the right hand above. <coughs> I don't like to fold, what can I say? Well, me neither. <laughs> 275, five. All right, players are going to go on a short break. We <sighs> also will have to take a short little break. We'll be back in about four minutes. Don't go anywhere. Action continues in four minutes. <clears throat> seven deuce here. Will this be the one for Yanni Yukaminen? 
We'll see what the first three cards bring, and then he's going to make a decision from there. Yanni's only got 225k behind. Ace, Jack, Seven, Rainbow rolled off the deck, and Yagamana can't bear to watch. <laughs> he is scared to watch, knowing how much pain Juhas has inflicted on the players at this final table. From his perspective, with the backdoor clubs and pairing his Jack, maybe he's just hoping that Juhas doesn't have an Ace? Yeah, I mean, he, he's aware Juhas is really just opening any four cards on the button, so... Maybe he thinks that, you know, my jack plus my backdoor clubs is going to be good enough to go with here. Problem being, Juhas not only has the ace, also has the backdoor clubs covered. Yeah, two pair here for Juhas, top and bottom. The backdoor <laughs> clubs, as Remco just mentioned, are the nut clubs, which trump Yukaminen's king high clubs. So Yukaminen in a world of hurt here. <laughs> that graphic at the top left corner has to be the most depressing <laughs> yeah. thing you can look at. Yoni Yukaminen, two outs. We are all in on the flop for his tournament life. The Finn has hung tough, but it's not been his day. He has only won three hands at this final table. Still finds himself three-handed, meaning he's got a nice little payday here, but now in a world of trouble looking for a jack and a jack only turn is a king it was paint meaning that he now has two pair inferior though to the two pair of Juhas. two now, more outs though two more outs looking for a king or a jack ja river card is the 10 of Good spades it's fun Yoni Yalkamainen claims it was fun. That is a lie. He has only won three hands. Of course, this man plays to win. But joking aside, always a good sport. Yoni Yalkamainen departs in third place. A good run for him. The spike card's not going his way today. $1,000, but man, does he face an uphill battle. Maximum. This one could be over <laughs> very quickly. It could also take a while if is able to find a double up early here. He's only got nine and a half big blinds to start heads up play here. Juhas has found a way to win with basically any combination of cards. Calls the 300k with the mere queen 10 deuce deuce, Donnie. Not the most appealing hand, but you know, if it's Juhas, he might hit a deuce here. <laughs> Doesn't hit one, but still managed to find top pair here. That's an all-in bet here for <laughs> Jim Colby, who makes the call right away. Huh. Jim Colby has 16 outs, a jack, a nine, an eight, a six, Rainbow and a king. <laughs> Colby didn't directly hit with that board, but you can see from the percentages, 63% yeah, to win this hand and double up. Jim Colopy needs a whole lot more than just his first double up. But hey, it is or it could be a starting point for a comeback in this event. Jim Colopy looking for one of 16 outs to double up as Juhas has the made hand with a pair of tens. Jim Colopy, will he finish second again? Turn card is the three of clubs. Doesn't change a thing. No clubs for either player. Now, odds flipping in Juhas' favor. 60-40 going to the river. 16 outs for Jim Colopy. Can he find a way to double up, or will this thing be all over? River card is the ace of hearts, and it is all over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Thank words you. good game never applied more than they do right now as Benjamin Juhas goes one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back inside the Pokego oh, Studio. He's gonna do it My name himself. is Ben Brinkema. Donnie <laughs> Peters alongside me. We are live right now, March 21st. PGDPLO series underway. Event one final table. Five players remaining. Jay Nandes, our short stack, tied with Mr. Hoban. Fred Hoban, the smartest man in the room, as we have determined in the previous level. Bryce Jockey. Back on top after a very swingy couple of orbits. Alan Lee probably still wondering what could have been. Don, he could have busted two players. Uh, ex excuse me, he could have doubled, bust, busted someone. Like I don't know what the exact math was, but he could have had like seven million chips. More. He, he, I think he would have been up over 
10 million, maybe wow. 11 million. I mean, Hoban takes that one. Three aces in his hand. No one willing to fight up against him. Lee raising it up to 375 with King Queen 10 9. Yaki makes the call. Defending on the big line, Donnie, with a, a speculative hand, so to say. Check, check there. King on the turn. Yaki was out in front on the flop. Now Lee is out in front here on the turn. Yaki check folds the turn to a bet from Lee. Here's a look at our PokerGo MTT Strategy Workshop live at the PokerGo Studio April 5 through 7. And the buy-in to this includes a USPO satellite entry. So you get a chance to learn from Andrew Moreno and Mr. Lucky Chewy if you go to get.pokego.com slash strategy. And you also get a chance to win a seat into our opening event of the 2024 U.S. Poker Open. Don't hesitate because we only have a few seats left. So get.pokego.com slash strategy if you want to level up, do a cool trip to Vegas, hang out with the boys, learn a thing or two, and then who knows, you might work your way into the U.S. Poker Open. Action back on Yaki in the small blind. Ace, queen, queen, deuce. He's going to attack and take this one down. Just tuning in, please let us know where you're watching from. Let us know how your day has been. How's the grind been lately? Have you winning any hands? Let us know. We are streaming live every single day until next Friday. Tons of PLO final table action for you. Hoban makes the call after limping the small blind. Lee raced to 450. Big blind is now 150K. This is a new level. 
just over a million in there on the 10-6-3 two spade flop. Top pair for Lee, but Hoban's got a nice combination of draws here with spades working, some straight draws working as well. And the money is in. Here we go. All right, let's go. Check from Hoban. Bet the pot from Lee. Hoban check raises all in. Lee is there to make the call. Hoban, the player at risk here. But you can see, even though he doesn't have a made hand right now, he is technically behind the pair of tens for Lee. Hoban does have the equity advantage, 60% for him, 40% for Lee. See Hoban's out at the top of the screen. He's got 16 of them. Wow. Turn is the ace of hearts. Hoban shaking his head. He needs to, he needs to do the stand-up. That's what he needs to do. Sir, get out of your chair. <laughs> River card. The five of clubs, and that is going to do it for Fred Hoban. What a roller coaster it has been for him today. Up and down, back up again, and now to the rail in fifth place. Take it home, $39,600. It's funny how Troja and Hoban were two of the most entertaining players at the final table to start, and they're also the first two to hit the rail. The final four guaranteed $52,800. And Jay Nandes, Mr. Fernando Habegger, still the short stack. He was short with six left, with five left, and now with four left, he is still the short stack. But hey, still hanging in there. What do you got now? Uh, six? Close to six. Yeah. Alan Lee is now the chip leader of over six million in chips. So even though he folded a full house and what would have been the winning full house earlier. Okay. He's come back from that and back out in front. Fernando Habiger, AKA Jane Nandes is okay. still the short stack here, but okay. does have just about two million to work with. Action here is between Habiger and Lee, blind versus blind. Lee flops middle set of eights here on the queen eight six flop. A little bit of a wrap here for Habiger. He's also got backdoor nut clubs. Habiger makes the call. Lee had bet 175 there on the flop. Turn is the jack of clubs. Both players with backdoor flush draws, but Hoppiger's ace nine of clubs is the better of those two flush draws. Equity's, equity's extremely close here, basically a flip. Kay. Lee checks. Hoppiger checks. Three of diamonds on the river, so. Habiger misses all those draws. Alan Lee's three eights are good here as, as long as he gets to a showdown, which I, I think we can expect him to do. Five twenty-five into eight hundred thousand. Jay Nandez quickly out of the way. And the chip leader, Alan Lee, chips up further, separating himself from the pack a little bit more, up to 6.5 million now. Fernando Habiger down to 1.45 million.
for all the PLO experts in the chat. Who do you think is going to win this thing? Alan Lee, of course, on a massive tear. Not too long ago, I mentioned him being the only player without winning a hand. He now has won the most hands at this final table, up to seven hands won. He's won five of the last ten at this final table. Bryce Jockey came into today as the chip leader. Estanislao came into today looking for blood. And Fernando Habegger, Mr. Jane Andis, quite possibly the most experienced PLO player. He's been playing both online and live for many years. And, of course, he is the man behind PLO Mastermind. Uh, if you want to basically get better at PLO, all you have to do is go to plomastermind.com slash pokergo. Sign up for a free account and start practicing right now, which is what I've been doing while Donnie's been talking. So, hey. Yeah, and this, this is one of those free accounts where it's it's not one of those free accounts plus credit card. No credit card required. True. Remco got in there in about 15 seconds. I'm still in there. <laughs> I'm working on my pre-flop game. A couple of aces here for Lee. Up against the Queens for Yaki. Of course, they have two other cards going with them. Set of queens here on the flop for Yaki. Lee has those aces, as I mentioned. He also has hearts. Yaki had opened under the gun. He made it 525. Alan Lee made the call in position. Now on the flop, Yaki checks. Lee comes with a bet here, 400K. These are the two biggest stacks of these four players remain, so keep that in mind here. Yaki makes the call, nine on the turn. Yaki still good here. And he checks. There is over 2.2 million out there in the middle. Lee checks behind. Seven of hearts comes in on the river. Flipping the script here, giving Alan Lee the check mark. He has the nut flush here. Jockey out of position. Let's see if he comes up with anything creative here, but Hart's likely to slow him down as he checks. Let's see what sort of sizing Alan Lee wants to come with. 1.3. 1.3 into Love this sizing from Lee. Really putting the pressure on Yaki, but still also making it seem as though he's trying to get a bluff through when that heart pops up. Yaki thinks the better of it, and let's go of his top set. Yeah, I, I like the discipline there. Uh, you know, we have seen Yaki get sticky at times, not only here at this final table, but um, you know some other PLO final tables. But there, thought better of it. Got away from a set. Not the easiest thing to do. So conserves some chips. He's still on four million. Yaki is still second place, but right now it is the Alan Lee show. He's up approaching eight million, starting to kind of run away with this thing. I think our colleague Tim Duckworth told us what he's making his tenth PLO cash in, in terms of PGT PLO events and third final table. It's absurd. Is, is Alan Lee, and you know he's going to get the Ace King King Ten here. I mean. The train just keeps on <laughs> running. Comes in with a raise under the gun. Oh, wow. Habiger here. Ace, king, jack, jack. And given where he is in chips, I would imagine the money's going in here. Especially when you consider that at this point, you know, Lee has been relatively conservative, but as his chips get larger, he can certainly start opening things up. But Habiger's just going to run into it here, and there it is. Habiger three-bet jams. Lee makes the call, and here we go. Nobody at fault here. Habiger looking to get back into the game. 
Looking nice. for a jack, looking for some clubs. I go for the jack. Greedy. <laughs> 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 if we can make vicious. I have the last king, so. Yeah. Oh. That's a yellow card for Mr. <laughs> Samaslau. <laughs> Never allowed to yeah, disclose like any missing outs. Just a little jack. Don't want to hurt that sweat. Goose, goose, goose. I do those, so. Three point one million in the middle. Mm. Habegger's turn with life on the Same line. If Lee wins this. He's going to be closing in on ten million chips. Here comes the flop. Five, yeah. six, six. As dull Oops. as it can possibly be, when you're battling with hands such as the ones on display currently. Habegger looking for a jack and a jack only to survive here. Turn is the five of hearts. No surprise to see all low cards after so many. Big cards were already distributed to the players. Jay Nandis, the man behind PLO Mastermind, one card away from the rail. And that is it. Four on the river. Habegger eliminated in fourth place. Deep run by him. And hopefully we'll see him back in the upcoming events. He takes home $52,800. That'll fund the remainder of his PGT PLO series. <laughs> But all it's eyes on now. Alan Lee, uh, little who is up to a whopping 9.5 million, yeah. has nearly 60% uh, of the chips in play. Three, three to 50. What a tear he's been on. Yeah, Alan Lee absolutely crushing right now. He got greedy, man. He could have just got an ace. <laughs> you get an ace and oh. chop the pot. I'd be ecstatic. Yeah, buttons here. He won, yeah. 75 oh, I folded. Scan it. I can scan it. It's oh. big. It was a big oh. hand. All right, we just flip it over. Whoa. Good fold, me. Yeah. Good fold. I actually oh. had two overs. So okay. King, queen. I had a jack. You prefer the skin usually because... Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, I will. You guys want to do straddles for us to turn it? <laughs> to hurry it up. I mean, they kind of did it for us, skipping mm -hmm. the 125 big one level. <laughs> and, and next is 200. So. I mean, that one's a normal well, jump. But. No, but there's no 120, 125, no 160. Well, it's a, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Skip the 125. Yeah. Well, the 150, 160. 160 was, thing, was unlikely because there's no right. Okay chips. But. Right. So they replaced the 160 with this, but I mean, could have been a 75, 125 level for sure. No, nope, we got to keep on moving, Donnie. <laughs> with a 9983. Good to let you all know that the final three are guaranteed $72,600. Good, great way to start your series. Yeah. You know? wow. <laughs> Four minutes. Okay. And how many hands is that? One, two, three? Three-handed PLO, Donnie, got to switch gears a little bit, be a bit more aggressive. Good to also mention that even though this doesn't count towards the pot raise, there is a big blind ante in play. Yeah, there is. So, you know, when you're in that big blind, you're paying double. Moves along the action. We are playing 150,000 big blind here. Stanislaw had raised from the small blind, made it 450. 
Yaki made the call from the big blind. So just over a million in there between these two, blind on blind. This Stanislaw gets a pretty good flop here. Top pair with that queen. He's also got backdoor clubs. He's got the best kicker. He's got the ace. Check, check. Nine on the turn. That does give Yaki a pair of nines. I can't think of many more intimidating things than playing three-handed PLO. It just feels like it's always your turn. You're always being put under pressure and the third nine hits for Yaki on the river a million in the middle yeah pretty pretty welcome sight there for Yaki probably feeling very good about his hand a little bit more thought here on the river from Stanislaw Comes with pot. Look wow. at this. Yaki Sweet. quickly calls it off. That bet on the river of 1,050,000. 1050? You said? Hmm? It's 1050, right? 1,050,000. Yeah. 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 Stanislaw. Wow. <laughs> I've, I've become a fan of his game. Oh, the, yeah. The aggression has worked in many spots so far. This one, it doesn't work, but I hope that, you know, it doesn't steer him away from taking those approaches. It's really been a lot of fun to watch. The river, I guess. I'd say so. I mean, <laughs> it gave your opponent the winning end. Yaki scoops that pot, and he's back up over five million. Most importantly, widening up a gap between him and Stanislaw, so he's firmly in second. Still trailing Alan Lee, of course. Stanislaw out of the way from the One button. Eight cent. Thank you. Yeah, Yaki makes the call from the small blind. He's got queen ten, eight five, ten eight of diamonds. Lee checks. Six six four and a mystery card. Jack five three here, two hearts. And Lee is at least open ended with a pair of sixes. Could also have a heart draw depending on what that other card is. Check check eight on the turn. Two pair now for Bryce Yaki. Still missing a fourth <coughs> card here from Alan Lee. I mean, if anyone should be playing with three cards, it's Alan Lee right now. Uh, that's that's very true. Yaki comes with 150. Lee makes the call. Six on the river. So at least a set of sixes for Lee. <laughs> I mean that other card could be a could be a, a seven could be a deuce right I mean Yaki checks seven fifty out there three fifty is the bet Lee looking for value here from Bryce Yaki who seemingly has it figured out. One time extension used there.
second time extension. Once again, great discipline from Bryce Yockey letting go of the two pair. Alan Lee continues to rake him in. Just a hair below 10 million as he is running away with it. Uh, here's a little update for you. The most I can iconic cash game show lives on PokerGo. The new season is airing right now. We have a limited time sale that ends on March 31st. HSP 12 half to save $30 on your first year on an annual subscription. That is because we are halfway Hope through right. the new season of High Stakes Poker, and it has been all bangers so far. It's been a lot of fun, great season, lots of action, lots of drama. Go check that out. Whether you are new to PokerGo or, or a current subscriber, you don't want to miss that action. Yeah, I don't know if people saw the, the call Brandon Adams made the other oh day, but I mean, that was... Said? Brandon Adams making his return, I believe, to High Six Poker for the first time since Season 8. It is Season 12, so wow. it's been a while since we've seen the professor, but he's back, and Andrew Robel put him to the test right away, but <laughs> Brandon Adams said, not in my classroom, sir. I do like how Andrew Robel just always tries to test the water. Like, he always wants to see. He's, he's great. I he's mean, he's really good. <laughs> He's just, he, he really is just a crusher in those super high stakes cash games. I mean, he's been doing it forever, of course. All three players are involved here on the Jack 9 3 all club flop. Yaki, excuse me, flops a flush with the deuce four of clubs in his hand. Action checks around to the king of spades on the turn. As long as Yaki doesn't fold, you guys can see the percentages on the screen. He can't lose. Four high flush, of course, not what you're hoping for, but when the action is this passive, you're going to feel confident about this. Checked against Yaki, who is last to act and is going to go for a little, little nibble of value here on the river. Yaki, having shown no strength during this hand might get a customer here. As Stanislav still left to act behind. He's got King Queen. Lee with the set. It's going to be hard to lay this down given how passive the action has been. Wow, such discipline from Alan Lee. Estanislaw with the quick fold, and Bryce Yaki gets no value from his flush. Excellent play by Alan Lee yet again. <sighs> blinds are up. 100,000 small blind, 200,000 big blind. That's how it feels. Yeah, 
1.5 with the small thank one. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Stanislaw announcing the size of his stack, which is just seven big blinds at this point. Queen, queen, 10, three. With one suit here for the chip leader, Lee, on the button. Comes in with a raise. Again, larger level now. The big blind is 200,000. Stanislaw got out of the way, but Yaki said, let's see a flop, and he's in there. Do 6-5, two clubs, Lee flops a flush draw. Check, check on the flop. Another club comes here on the turn. It gives... Lee a flush, but Yaki has a six in his hand for trips. Check, check again. Nine on the river. So Lee and that club flush. The winning hand. Five hundred thousand is the bet from Yaki. Five hundred into one point three five. Guessing Lee's coming with at least a call. I would lean probably call here. There it is. Trips. Yaki shows his trips, but it is no good. Lee shows the flush, and the rich get richer. Lee folds when he's losing. He calls when he's winning. That seems like the recipe to <laughs> take this one down. We're still three-handed, but... Alan Lee's grip on this final table just continues to strengthen. It's been a very impressive display so far. If you've been with us the entire time, thank you so much for tuning in. We have PLO live streams every single day until the grand finale next Friday. If you want to follow along with these events through our live reporting, you can do so on pgt.com. Click on the live reporting banner. We have updates from all of our events and all the action leading to the final table. Right now, the $7,500 PLO bounty is underway. Josh Arye is our current chip leader. We have Eric Seidel in the mix, Isaac Kempton, Mr. Daniel Negreanu, Alex Foxen. It's a who's who of the uh, of the poker superstar ranks. Dylan Weissman, of course, whenever there's PLO, he's nearby. Nick Schulman in the mix, Sean Winter, Adam Hendricks, Sam Soverell. It's going to be a good one. Coming up later in the series as the buy-ins will continue to go up. We also have a 15K PLO Progressive Bounty and a 25K PLO Championship. That championship will be our final live stream event number nine. Walk. Look at this. A walk for the short stack. <laughs> Stanislaw had one worth gambling with, potentially, Donnie. Yeah, but I think you'll also take a walk. I mean, you know, free chips. Ain't, ain't going to complain <coughs> about that. Now it's up to me. I was relying on you there. I thought we were pals. <laughs> I thought you'd take care of business. I'm a lone wolf. <laughs> Lee's out of the way from the button. Is Stanislaw here with the ace, king, eight, three. And the small blind comes in with a raise. Makes it 600,000. Let's see what Yaki wants to do with the king, nine, six, five, Badoogie.
Yaki thinking are over here. Would cost him 400k more to make the call here and see a flop. All right, he elects to get out of the way. Stanislav yep. takes that one. So two in a row from him. Still the short stack, but still fine. <coughs> Lotus asking if we show day one coverage as well. No, we are just focused on the final table for this series, but it is our goal to show some day one coverage of the upcoming US Poker Open, so stay tuned for that. That should be a lot of fun. US Poker Open is only only a few weeks away, Donnie. It's, uh, it's all moving so fast. Yeah, we got this PGT PLO series, as you mentioned, taking place through March 29th. Then about a week after that, maybe a, a little bit more, we have the U.S. Poker Open series. And then after that, you know what, a week or two after that, we got the Texas Poker Open oh. coming to you from Champions Club down in Houston. So a lot of live streaming on deck for Poker Go and the PGT. Of course, as you mentioned earlier, we have Season 12 of High Stakes Poker running right now. New episodes on Mondays. Yeah, Things, a, things are heating up, and then, you know, next thing you know, it's going to be World Series of Poker time. <laughs> yeah, I just want to mention again, Donnie, the Texas Poker Open, you sort of touched on it briefly. They have a $2 million guaranteed main event. So if you are in Texas, or if you're, you know, nearby, or if you have a chance to fly out there, April 24th until May 5th, the Texas Poker Open will be organized at Champions Club Houston. They are good friends of us. We partner up with them. Uh, also, make sure to follow them on YouTube as well. Uh, just search for Champions Club uh, Texas, and you'll find them on YouTube. Uh, give them a, a subscribe if you can. Uh, but they kick things off with a $400 monster stack as well as day 1A of the main event on April 24th. I main believe it's live streaming of every day of the main event. Yes. I believe Jeff Platt, Brent Hanks are going to be down there in Texas, bringing the cowboy hats, bringing you guys the commentary. I heard the food there at the venue is absolutely incredible. I cannot wait to have a chance to visit myself later this year. But yeah, $3,300 main event in Texas, $2 million guarantee. They have satellites running every day, uh, both turbos and regular satellites. Uh, they have a wide variety of side events happening, daily cash games as well. So Champions Club Houston, that is the place to be if you want to you know, play a large field event with a big guarantee. Uh, they also have PLO events there. So if you're a PLO player, go check them out as well. Those Texas events, I mean, those Texas rooms in general, you know, really have put themselves on the map. Champions Club, of course first and foremost on that list. Right. The games are big. The games are juicy. I can only imagine a $2 million guarantee main event, what, what sort of turnout it's going to be for that. So very much looking forward to it. Yeah, they even have a 10K No Limit Hold'em high roller and a 10K PLO high roller. Love it. Six. Here comes Yaki on the button. 600,000 with the ace, Jack Jack 3. Alan Lee is in the small blind. He gets out of the way with the king, queen, five, four. King, nine, seven, deuce for Stanislav in the big blind. He does have the king, nine of spades, but we can obviously see that those spades would be dominated against Yaki's ace, jack of spades. Not enough there for Stanislav to go with, and Yaki takes that one. Still very much Allen Lee out in front here. Three-handed play. Event number one of the PGT PLO series presented by PLO Mastermind. Bryce Yaki currently in second place. You see him there sitting on just over 3.4 million to start this hand. Five 
150 on the button from Lee. He's got Jack 974. Yaki's in the big blind, makes the call with the Jack 1088. Queen 6-6 six, six here. Yaki still out in front. He checks. Lee checks. Ace of diamonds on the turn doesn't change anything. Yaki is still best. Comes with 500k. Not much going on here for Alan Lee, and he lets it go as expected. It's a good time for me to remind you that if you want to work on your PLO game, check out plomastermind.com slash poker go. Sign up for free and start practicing for free as well. Free being the key word there, which is uh, always a trigger for me to go and try something out. So you heard it here first. Our presenting sponsor. There it is on your screen. PLO Mastermind. Great name, by the way, too, Donnie. really is. Over the years, we've gone through so many poker coaching and training sites. This might be one of my favorite names. Very clever. Well done. Stanislav still sitting on the short stack. Finds ace king seven five. Seven. Mm -hmm. Seven. That's a sizable raise there. Seven hundred k on the button. And Yaki here, king jack ten three double suited. Makes the call. Lee in the big blind. Eight eight six three. Wow, three way action. Two point three million in the middle. Donnie, if Stanislaw catches even a glimpse of this flop, he might be all in. Yeah, I would. I would guess that's the case. Six three seven rolls off the deck. Stanislaw does flop a seven, but this is not exactly what he was hoping for. Yeah, Lee flops two pair here with six three. He also does have those two eights in his hand. Hot. Two point three. Lee not wasting any time applying the pressure on both his opponents. And as Stanislaw is going for it here. Yeah, not, not the best spot for, or not the worst spot for him to get his money in here, especially with the, the hand that Lee has. You guys can see the percentages there. We're flipping. <laughs> we are definitely flipping. 15 outs twice for a Stanislaw. An ace, a king, a four, seven, and a five. Would help him, of course. The four would be the preferred card. Giving him a straight. Lee with two pair and the over pair. Turn card. The four of hearts. That's exactly what I said. Lee now. You called it. With seven outs, a six, a three, or a five, or else a Stanislaw will double up to 3.7 million. That would be very significant if he's able to double his chips here. It'd be the first little chink in the armor of Alan Lee, river card to jack of clubs, and indeed, three-handed play will continue. 725. Lee still with over 50% of the chips in place, so nothing to worry about for him just yet, but it must be nice to get at least a chance again for Stanislaw.
Some love in the chat for poker in Texas. It's definitely high on my list of places that I have to play now that the action down there has gotten so hot and heavy. Yaki gives up his button there. Lee in the small blind, ace, eight, six, deuce. Nice Badoogie hand. He's going to limp in. Jack, 10, 10, 9 for Stanislav here. We'll see if he can keep the train moving in the right direction. He checks, heads up to this flop. Lee versus Stanislav. Queen, four, three, two hearts. Check, check here. Ace on the turn. That puts Lee out in front. Check, check once again. Three on the river. So Lee with the check mark here as long as he doesn't fold. with a little bet, 250. Stanislav here, deep into the tank, trying to figure this one out. We can obviously see that if he does ultimately come with a call, it would be they say a bad decision. He does make the call. It's going to be shown the bad news. <laughs> Alan Lee immediately... Reminding everyone that he is the one in charge here <laughs> at this final table. If you want to be in charge of your poker tournaments over the course of the rest of your life, you might as well just go to octopipoker.ai or just check this out, pokergo.com slash winmasters for a chance to win a seat into the Poker Master presented by octopipoker.ai. It's a free social media giveaway, so might as well just give it a chance. Yeah, you just click a, click a few buttons, complete some various social media tasks, and you get some free raffle tickets, and hey, you could be at this final table. <laughs> Bokergo.com slash winmasters. Donnie, I feel like we're giving away a lot of free stuff lately. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, hey, if they're going to let us do it, why not, right? <laughs> Rainbow holding here for Stanislaw. Just going to try to see a flop here with Bryce Jockey. Three-handed play is taking a little bit longer than I expected. Just, just given what we saw in the early portion of things, you know, the, the chips were flying, the stacks were getting in, people were certainly not backing down, but things have, you know, gotten a little bit more tame after we lost Fernando Habiger in fourth place and they've been playing three-handed for a, a little bit now. Uh, 
a million in the middle here on the turn. Yaki, big favorite here after hitting a Broadway straight. Yaki continues with 500,000. Stanislaw with the, the three pair, of course. Only two of those count, but still, he's paired three of his cards. Feels like one of those spots to reevaluate on the river. River card, seven of spades. No full house for Stanislaw, and Yaki's Broadway will be best here with two million in the middle. on Yaki. Let's see how much he's going to come with here. Yaki goes for a hefty one here. One point six million is the bet. Tony, if you're a Stanislaw, hands are sort of tied here, aren't they? They are a tough spot. Going to be tricky to figure this one out. Deep into the tank here is Stanislaw. You saw him fan out his time extension plaques there. So, okay, look at this. Discipline fold. There you go. Well done, sir. Very well done. I've seen a lot of, lot of different uh, disciplined moments from all three of these players. The Stanislaw there. We've seen it from Yaki. We saw it from Lee as well. So, I'm not sure about this one. <laughs> You'll have to wait Stand to see it on hour. TV, sir. That's how it works. Rules were reversed earlier in the day when Jay Nanes was wondering what he got bluffed with. <clears throat> we remain three-handed here in the opening event of the PGT PLO series. After losing that pot, folding the river, Stanislav Back to 2.2 million, so he is three of three. And Bryce Yaki's going to give Alan Lee a walk. In arena. Second walk of three-handed play, I believe. Stanislav got one earlier. Lee gets one here. We are starting the 47th hand of the final table. So things have gone pretty quickly. We lost Sean Troja in sixth place, Fred Hoban in fifth place, and
Fernando Habiger in fourth place. That led us to three-handed play here, Lee, Stanislav, and Yaki, and it's been a pretty lengthy three-handed play given what we saw earlier and the speed of play and the chips getting in and all of that sort of stuff. Lee limps from the small blind, and Stanislav checks his option in the big blind. Ace, eight, four, two diamonds. Check. Lee with top pair, he checks. Stanislav's got a pair of fours right now, and he checks. King of spades on the turn. Lee still out in front here. Checks once again. Stanislav did add a Broadway straight draw. He's going to bet it 200K. Lee makes the call. Deuce of spades on the river. Lee is best here with his pair of aces. Could be a spot if Stanislav wants to come with a bluff. I don't know, he doesn't. Checks behind, Lee takes that pot. The rich get richer. The Stanislav now on 1.6 million. There's something about PLO that makes me more comfortable on a short stack. It's it, it sort of feels like you have so many chances. And seeing flops in the pot limit format definitely a little bit easier sometimes than a no limit hold'em when that pressure just becomes all in our fold from time to time. Six hundred thousand on the button from Lee. Ace seven four four. If Stanislav's got one here that I think he's going to end up going with. Ace Jack Jack nine. There it is. Oh baby. And with six hundred k already invested, let's see what Alan Lee is going to do. And there it is. Calls it off. As Stanislav all in an at risk for his tournament mm. life, but he's going to be the favorite here. Three point six million. You have a four. In the I pot. Ace eight four five. Double. Had a nice hand. Don't love seeing that. A little too ambitious? Eh, I don't think so. Looks bad now, though. <laughs> Alan Lee, with plenty of ambition to, Jack -Jack. to send Estanislav to the rail. Does this count as a stand up? I mean, he's like halfway I'm, out I, of his chair. I don't know. I think this only <laughs> works sort of halfway. <laughs> In a suit. A doogie. Oh, yeah. Let's see what the Let's flop go. brings. Wow, four on the flop, and Alan Lee takes the lead here. Yeah. As Stanislaw now double needs up. to hit a set to yeah. retake the lead. Hit four, five, double suited. We would probably would have no backdoor flush draws either. And that is the case four, as you hear Preciaki mentioned, he folded a four. <laughs> wow. Turn, the six of clubs doesn't change a thing. As Stanislaw looking for a jack and a jack only, he might have stood up a little bit too late. River card. The yeah, seven of you. clubs, and that is it. A Stanislaw eliminated in third place. He takes home $72,600. Right. Bryce Jockey now heads up against Alan Lee. I got 3.8. Lee with an absolutely dominant performance at this final table after a quiet first hour. He's won 18 hands of the last 30. And we're going up in stakes. Eight. Bryce Yaki started today as the chip leader. 
Okay. Now has to overcome yeah, quite a bit to take this I one mean, now. The ship's counts aren't always perfect. Just okay, cause yeah, actually, Just because of color ups and I, stuff. Actually, it is perfect. It is perfect. It is oh, perfect? Okay, yeah. perfect. There you go. 12.7. Yeah. So I'm. Um, 250, 250. Yeah. Alan Lee continues to just right, we got heads up. cruise, right. just like we were saying, <laughs> at this final table. S slow start for him though. He needed to get up to speed. He, you know what it is, Didn't right? win a hand for I quite a bit at the uh, beginning. Rocky? Folded for much yeah. of the early How'd going, like and uh, yeah, I only got to eat like. Would you get? Would you a quarter eat? of it? I got the chicken kebab with uh, gyro. Okay, the gyro, the gyro's actually not that good. Yeah. It's okay, but the the chicken and the, the rice steak is, everything's oh the, 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 the steak. steak is quite good and um the rice and salad are fantastic actually especially at the restaurant where they make it like fresh salad's not as good to go because they don't like mix it and stuff yeah that's true all right so Two players guaranteed $99,000, playing for nearly $162,000 up top. And of course, that event number one trophy here at the PGT PLO series presented by PLO Mastermind. First hand of heads up play going over to Bryce Yockey. Stacks up at the top of the screen. You guys can see that Alan Lee is well out in front. About a three to one chip advantage over Yaku. You have one of those already, right? I won. It wasn't. It wasn't Pillow Series. It was. Uh, you won the U.S. Open or something. Something like that. An, an U.S. Poker mm -hmm. Open. Yeah. I believe it was the 2023 U.S. Poker Open that Alan Lee won <coughs> a PLO event that was part of that series. Buddy Elvis in the chat is in the right place. He says, PLO, Pot Limit Omaha and High Low are the best games. I cringe on Hold'em. <laughs> well, Buddy Elvis, that means you have to stick with us here for the next eight final tables as we have nine of these in the next nine days. Another one here for Yaki is slowly trying to chip away. By the way, an honor and a pleasure having everyone with us here today watching and the trophy the players are playing for. Rumor has it, if you uh, break it, you get sent into a new dimension. It opens up a time <laughs> and space continuum uh, in some capacity. Ace deuce six on the flop here. Deuce for Yaki puts him in the lead. King high, good. no good, and Bryce Yaki starts a small little comeback. Every pot counts at this stage. Two to one chip lead for Alan Lee, as these players are playing for $161,000. Seven fifty. You win. Yep. I need this 
so. Beautiful hand here for Bryce Jockey. Double suited kings and aces for Alan Lee. Oh boy. This could be a big clash. Also a suit there for Alan Lee. Pot, pot 2.25. Wow. Race to 750. Pot from Alan Lee. I cannot see Bryce Jockey do anything except for moving all in here. And there it is, all in from Yaki. Lee with the snap call, and we got the classic aces versus kings at here. Least at least they're double suited. Yeah. Still 34% for Yaki. So, Donnie, not the absolute worst when you have two kings versus two aces. Nope. Could be a lot worse. Yaki knows though. He's doing the stand up. We're <laughs> straight out of the out of the out of the gates here, you know. Alan Lee looking to close this thing out. What a dominant performance it has been. And here's the flop. Jack, eight, five. You got a four though. Yaki looking for a king, an eight, or a four. Not too many. Spade fours would be interesting on the turn too. Yes. Backdoor flush draw, still alive, still possible. Nine of clubs on the turn. Yaki looking for one of six remaining outs to stay alive in this event. Let's see the river card. It is the nine of diamonds. GG from Bryce Yaki, he knocks the table. What a dominant display Thanks. from Alan Lee at this final table. He sat quietly for about 15 hands, then he kicked it into high gear and ran over the entire table, yeah, winning 20 of the last 35 hands. Couldn't overcome what a display. What a performance. <laughs> And what a great win for Alan Lee, who takes home $161,700. Bryce Yaki takes home $99,000 for finishing in second place. And here's a look at the upcoming events on the PGDPLO series. Sorry, don't leave that. You see it on your screen there tomorrow. We have the final table of the PLO bounty event. Daniel Legrano currently still in the mix. <laughs> Much more PLO action still to come here from Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah, My yeah, name yeah, is Rem Brinkema. Yeah, yeah. Donnie Peters alongside uh, me. Uh, practice your PLO game while you get ready for tomorrow's final table on plomastermind.com slash poker. Go always look at the beautiful Las Vegas strip as we sign off and tell you that tomorrow's final table will kick off at 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you tomorrow for event number two.